next curve. Hi everyone, this is Leonard Lee, Managing Director of Next Curve, and I'm here in San Diego, California at the Intercontinental Hotel attending uh, Qualcomm's 5G Summit, and with me are some guests. So if you gentlemen don't mind introducing yourselves. Sure, I'm Tom Butler, I'm the Executive Director for the Notebook Portfolio for Commercial ThinkPad globally. Hello, I'm Vishal Shah. I'm the general manager of the AR, VR, and Metaverse business unit at Lenovo. And this, Tom, this is the first time yeah, you and I have really met, yeah. right? And Vishal, we should have met a long time ago. I know, so, as, as local San Diego, yeah. I, I feel it's been a while, but yeah, good so, to see you. Yeah, and shame on us, because yeah. it should have been a long time ago. <laughs> well, but Yeah, but uh, you know what? It's great to meet both of you guys here face to face. And it's also great to uh, be speaking to Lenovo. And I know that you guys are a real great partner um, uh, and have some great stuff going on with uh, Qualcomm. And you have, you've had, I mean, ever since Mobile World Congress, you guys have had some really cool announcements. There's one particular <laughs> device that I'm very interested in checking out. And you happen to go, go up on stage on yeah. a panel and showcase it. But um, here, this is what I want to know. Um, I know that you guys are doing some really interesting things with um, emerging technologies, right? And um, really pushing the envelope of the personal computing experience. And, and I, I just wanted to chat with you guys about that. And maybe you guys can tell, share with my audience here, uh, the Next Curve audience, um, some of the things that uh, Lenovo is doing and maybe some of the de design philosophies mm -hmm. and how the technologies are informing where you guys are taking um, the, let's call it the next generation uh, computing experience um, uh, or, or PC experience. Yeah, yeah. well, I'll, I'll, I'll start and we'll jump into sort of how it extends. Mm -hmm. But let's, if we take a step back and look at what Lenovo has been doing with mm -hmm. Qualcomm, we've actually been in a, in a deep partnership for now several years, mm -hmm. and we partnered with them to bring the first 5G enabled laptop in the market. Mm -hmm. It was a Lenovo consumer device. Mm -hmm. We then followed that with a Lenovo uh, 5G plus millimeter wave, so sub six and millimeter wave device. Mm -hmm. And three, actually four years ago, we entered into a partnership and collaboration with Qualcomm, mm -hmm. Lenovo, and Microsoft to go develop a business ready device. Mm -hmm. And at that time, we looked at, you know, what was it going to take to make a an arm powered device mm -hmm. business ready and we needed performance mm -hmm. so we looked at sort of the roadmap at that time we were looking at hcx gen 1 gen mm -hmm. 2 and ultimately gen 3. Mm -hmm. we also looked at the you know the connectivity options and sort of migrating right. over to 5 5g sub 6 plus millimeter wave mm -hmm. and in the ecosystem so if you think about the ecosystem at that at the three four years ago there was basically most apps were not native or ready on a Windows device, right. uh, it was it was x86, and then ARM was not ready, right. and so we partnered with. We really actually we entered into a three-way collaboration. We partnered and, and ran pilots with commercial customers at the time, mm -hmm. and developed or curated a list of apps needed for a business-ready device. Mm -hmm. And so, in terms of productivity, manageability, um, security. Mm -hmm. You know, looked at that uh, the the list of apps, and then went went to those individual those uh, software vendors and and worked with them with Microsoft in concert to drive them to a native support. So when we launched this product, the ThinkPad X13s, it sort of came out at the right time. So you think about performance came up to the right curve, the app ecosystem caught up. We we we've now we're launched or, or well past launch of Windows 11, which facilitated. Uh, sort of the best use case. Mm -hmm. And then the device we, we launched was a business ready, you know, business class you know, ThinkPad, so rugged quality device, yeah. built for the rigors of a multi-year globally deployed device, yet gives you something that you, can, you have not experienced in the market mm -hmm. to date, which is autonomy. Yeah. And it's autonomy mm -hmm. from a connectivity perspective, but mm -hmm. also autonomy from a battery life perspective. Mm -hmm. So this device, and I know your users can't see this, but it's 2.4 pounds, so super light, yeah. super thin, but it gives you 28 hours of video playback. So you truly have an all-day mm -hmm. battery life uh, experience. And with again, paired with 5G or, or, or mm -hmm. millimeter wave even beyond, 
you have a connected, always on, always connected device because of that battery life. You don't have to worry about right. you know, looking for power supplies, you know, chasing right. or worried about battery life de declining over the day. And so with that uptime, you have a connected, up-to-date, right. ready-to-go, secure device. I, I just wanted to in interject really yeah, quickly. Yeah. That's sure. what I've been doing all day. <laughs> exactly. Looking, trying for, to find, looking for, looking for power. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Then, we uh, all do. You know, we all do. And, and trying to find some stationary time so that yes. I can wait for the device to charge. So I, uh, I'll, uh, I, I could have appreciated this battery in life. Yeah. So yeah, no, I mean, um, it's a uh, it's a really cool looking device. That's all yeah. I can say. No, yeah. I'm, I'm excited about it. And then just one more thing I'll say about the the Qualcomm experience. And so the other thing your users may you may be able to see is sort of the accentuation of the camera. Mm -hmm. And so. As we've gone into pandemic work from home, and even as we come out of mm -hmm. pandemic, which is a hybrid model, some working from home, some you know, some working in the office, there's been a, a dramatic uh, push towards these devices working as basically video telephony devices mm -hmm. or video collaboration devices. Right. You know, Pre-pandemic, no one was asking about the camera. It, right. was, you know, it was just a, a, a minor check in the box. Yes, I've, I've met an HD camera spec. Now we're, we're supplementing with much better cameras. This has a five megapixel mm -hmm. camera. We are, you know, we've leveraged the AI platform that Qualcomm mm -hmm. provides. Mm -hmm. So this device has auto noise cancellation. Mm -hmm. So even if I was clapping my hands to the side or if there's a dog barking or yeah. in my case, a UPS truck driving by, that would, that uh, all that noise goes away or, and it's focused just on your voice. Mm -hmm. And then you have auto background blur. And, and so if you're sitting in a cafe somewhere or some, you know, somewhere outside of the, of the business environment, it's just focused again on you and it brings you into the environment. So you have mm -hmm. rich collaboration, even if you're joining remotely. Mm -hmm. And that's enabled by the AI platform as mm -hmm. you, that offloads from the CPU. So you think about the compute platform normally would be taxed by providing background blur or, or noise cancellation. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it works in concert. Mm -hmm. So this this has been you know really a, a big step forward in terms of the way compute the way we can experience compute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So super excited about it. Yeah, and so one of the things that came up quite a bit um, in, in several of the sessions actually today on the plenary day, it was heterogeneous computing, mm -hmm. and so yeah. you know that's really thinking about the different types of uh, compute and uh, you know. Um, sort of this diversification of, uh, of compute, right? It, it, it's not just CPU. We have uh, AI um, uh, computing that is now coming on device. How are, uh, what are some of the ways specifically that um, that's being expressed through not only this product, but other products within your, your portfolio? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, you know, Tom did a great job of uh, talking about how we're <clears throat> really taking our core products mm -hmm. and pushing the limit on mm -hmm. uh, the connectivity there. Uh, what, what Lenovo was really proud about is our heritage and innovation. Mm -hmm. And as part of that, we're getting into these adjacent spaces right. around the client, mm -hmm. uh, the edge, the cloud, mm -hmm. uh, and the network, uh, mm -hmm. which is you know predominantly run by 5G right now. And all of that is coming comes together through our AI mm -hmm. as well. The common theme mm -hmm. is uh, you know a smarter device mm -hmm. across the what what why why our CEO calls the new IT client infrastructure, mm -hmm. right? So as part of that, uh, we have a, a great incubation process, a very venture capital-like process where we select four or five key technologies that we want to bet on and that mm -hmm. we believe are going to be the next you know, one to $5 billion businesses for Lenovo, mm -hmm. right? So as part of that, uh, we've invested heavily in AI and uh, what I'm leading is the AR, VR uh, right. division and now it's kind of morphed into XR-led metaverse. Right. So <clears throat> we saw early on, uh, you know, with with sort of the, the PC market and the mobile market kind of mm -hmm. flatlining, uh, there's definitely a desire to look at some of these new heterogeneous technologies, new client right. architectures right. that are out there and the AR industry, VR industry definitely stood out. Mm -hmm. It's an industry that's going to be about $150 billion in TAM mm -hmm. over the next five years, growing at about 60%, mm -hmm. uh, you know, year, year over year rate. And it's it's definitely the new paradigm of compute and, and mm -hmm. a new visual interface, right? So mm -hmm. going forward, as we have as as the, the the mobile handset morphs into more of a wearable device, mm -hmm. a lot of the computing and the visual interface is going to happen on mm -hmm. some sort of a wearable device, and that's what we work closely with Qualcomm on, mm -hmm. uh, with their XR1 chipset to come out with an AR headset. Uh, we have a VR. We're one of the few companies in the world that has a VR and AR portfolio, mm -hmm. and. <clears throat> 
the beauty of our solution, the Think Reality solution, it's a complete mm. uh, software ecosystem as well that mm. lets you manage these devices. It helps you deploy uh, these uh, your apps securely, mm. uh, and also it helps. It brings in a client ecosystem, an yeah. ISV ecosystem that also Tom talked about. It's very important mm. uh, because as we go after the enterprise use cases, one of the key asks from. Uh, from these big, large customers, whether it's the healthcare or education or Industry 4.0, mm -hmm. is that how can you help me, you know, create a complete solution uh, in this right. new AR VR right. space? Right. Earlier, what was happening, uh, and that, that's what where we identified the gap was that mm -hmm. uh, there would be a hardware vendor that would throw a hardware AR VR hardware over the wall. There would be a software vendor yeah. who hopes that uh, their software works with this hardware, and then you had this whole IT OT uh, NT challenge, right? We could talk right. about the IT operating technology network technology challenge that no one was solving. Mm -hmm. uh, so we brought a whole system integration ecosystem together, right? So mm -hmm. we stitched the software, the hardware, and the solution ecosystem mm -hmm. uh, to create these seamless uh, architectures mm -hmm. and end solutions mm -hmm. uh, for specific industry verticals. Okay, so I have, I have a question. So how does all the cool XR related stuff that you're doing inter interplay with the stuff that you're doing. So, you know, you have you have the traditional personal computing platforms, right? Yep. The form factors. You know, how do you do you see them as being complementary and then at some point uh, evolving into a, a maybe standalone or, you know, continuing to uh, have more of an integrated, complementary yeah. relationship. I mean, what, what are some yeah, of the thoughts yeah. there? I, what, I mean, really, what is Lenovo's vision and thoughts around how um, these, you know, oftentimes uh, in categories that are treated separately. Yeah. How do they? Yeah. How do they interplay? And how do they shape the? end user experience in the future. Yeah, and I think that's one of, uh, if I may start here, Tom, yeah. is that's one of uh, Lenovo's superpowers, is this one Lenovo approach. Superpower. Because we can go from okay. pocket to cloud, and uh -huh. we have technologies that help across yeah. that, across every yeah. layer of the yeah. metaverse that yeah. you need to invest in. Right. So a perfect example is our AR, VR, our AR glasses. Mm -hmm. They plug into the Motorola smartphone, right? Yeah. Which is, which is used, you know, using the latest Qualcomm right. 8450 uh, chipset. Uh, the VR glasses are standalone, but they, uh, if you want to really do high level gaming and computing right. on that, you know, we have to plug into a Lenovo workstation or, yeah. or a similar workstation. Our AR glasses also plug into our, uh, our workstations, which have, uh, you know, very high power graphics. So, mm -hmm. and then the future is we're very excited about this particular X13 ThinkPad is mm -hmm. that it really gives you mobility and autonomy on the go. So right. you can imagine now, yeah, uh, you're sitting in a Starbucks or you're yeah. sitting, uh, you know, uh, in a remote area and you put on these glasses and now you have five monitors in front of you mm -hmm. or you can have a six off experience and you can walk around a particular uh, you know machine part or engine or a consumer package grid and have like mm -hmm. you know five people their avatars you know collaborating you know, right now with this device right so mm -hmm. that's how we're kind of bringing the whole ecosystem together and we haven't even like, started talking about you know our edge infrastructure you know yeah, because yeah. a lot of the rendering is not going to start happening from the edge for these AR VR glasses right. and, and these devices as well so so then we bring in the edge layer and the cloud layer as well, which makes it even more exciting in terms of putting this whole package together. And it doesn't have to be our yeah. package. I mean, it's pretty flexible. Right. But as this industry evolves, the stack, you know, we're willing to change our stack and evolve the stack you know, based yeah. on the customer needs. Well, in a lot of ways, you guys kind of, all, uh, you know, uh, Qualcomm has their CIE or Connective Intelligent Edge story. I mean, you guys kind of have a similar thing. It just extends a little further uh, toward the cloud because you have the whole, you know, the the uh, server data uh, data center business yeah. and and then also you know uh, increasingly the edge right and, yeah. or edge infrastructure. I want to just be clear about that. And you know, I usually differentiate or I I, I treat separately, uh, you know, endpoints from you yeah. know, what they call. Uh, Absolutely, edge right, and yeah. you know, um, because it, it's it's about distributed computing. That's what edge computing is. It's not about standalone, uh, you and, know, endpoint computing. And I see AR VR as an as a IoT endpoint, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's basically, uh, and eventually, right. what Tom is doing is becoming endpoints. These are endpoints. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean yeah. there That's are exactly. all kind of endpoints, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. In in a way, and uh, and I think the the thing that. Um, that folks need to start thinking about, and, and it's weird when I talk to a lot of folks about edge computing, uh, they they think somehow it's endpoint computing, yeah. Yeah. but it's yeah. that edge computing where the infrastructure, like what you're saying, is really an important element in the uh, in delivering these new types of experiences. Because, like um, I think what, what Qualcomm has been really talking about, and what you guys are talking about right now, is how 
applications are going to be like sort of like a you know the virtualized RAM disaggregated right mm -hmm. you're going to have different functions residing and being placed where they're best suited to reside and perform and execute the workloads right so that's my little analyst bit that I'm throwing in there. That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, that's very really accurate. That's yeah. really accurate. No, so you know, I just wanted to highlight that because I think that's one one really interesting thing about you, you from the edge computing story that you guys bring to the yep. table. But then also, yeah, that that basically supports all of this whole endpoint um, uh, strategy that you guys have as well. So yeah, yeah. Well, well, think about the things you're the, the use cases you're unlocking. So mm -hmm. productivity security, yeah. data analytics, collaboration. So yeah. if you pair this, you know, let's say that we take this laptop, yeah. when you pair with AR glasses, that immediately opens up, dramatically broadens your, your field of view, not only from your field of view, but the, the data that you can bring into the device that you alone can see. Yeah. And so you, you take this device into the field, you have all day battery life, you pair that with glasses that you can now bring in multiple end users, mm -hmm. you know, from a group, from a collaboration perspective, multiple screens, and mm -hmm. it's secure mm -hmm. because no one else is seeing this. Right. So I could, I could actually be looking at, you know, the next X project that I don't want anyone else to look at and I could work with this on a, on a plane ride across the country, completely secure, and because I'm I'm the, I'm alone and seeing this, so it starts unlocking the capabilities like that when you get that again the collaboration security and, and as well as the productivity of the device and so the end to end ecosystem to your you know, to Vishal's point earlier we we for pants pocket the data center so to speak you know we own the we own the layers all the way yeah. across yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and just to add to what uh, what was said here is that uh, if you look at and this is where Qualcomm Spaces, the Snapdragon Spaces yes. program for XR yeah. is going to be yeah. a huge uh, you know it's yeah. going to be a sea change in the industry because yeah. as we get these ISVs and ecosystems, you know they're looking at this powerful combination of the AR glasses yeah. with the five G endpoint as well, saying that you know will we really experience PowerPoints in the same two D fashion or will, or will right. we start looking at our presentations in more of a 3D format going forward. Right, right. Uh, Tom talked about data visualization, right? So is it going to be when we when you start going looking forward, uh, how are we going to visualize this data? It's going to right. it's going to be in a more you know the, the bubbles and the bar charts are going to be more uh, mm -hmm. 3D format. That's going to be easier to explain. Uh, so that you know the the sky's the limit in terms of what that whole ecosystem yeah. is going to be. It's very similar right. to what the Google Play Store is or the or the iPhone uh, mm -hmm. app ecosystem is. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for sharing. Um, it's it's really exciting what you guys are working on, and uh, you know, uh, long overdue. You need to give me a demo. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. I don't know what you're waiting for. <laughs> we should do that. Absolutely. You know? yeah. You, you yeah. Have to explain hey. to them why. Commitment. Commitment. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I have it in my hotel room right here. Yeah. So we'll do yeah. that. What's yeah. your problem, man? <laughs> <laughs> and you, you definitely. Need to let me get in. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. super, super excited about you getting here. You get to try. Yeah, I'd really love to try it out. And uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a really nice, nice device. Yeah. So, uh, gentlemen, thank you yeah. so much. Pleasure. Thank yeah, you so much. Our pleasure. Thank, thank, thank you very much, San Diego. Yeah. yeah, and to our audience, thank you for uh, sticking with us up to this point. I hope you enjoyed uh, the um, sharing by my friends here from Lenovo. And uh, remember to uh, check us out at www.next-curve.com. That's Next Curve. And uh, we will see you next time. Again, gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll do this again. Absolutely. Visit us at www.next-curve.com.